All right, what's up, class? This is Optimus Fields at My Living Truth, and we're back for another episode. We're at block height 687,873, and the current price per Bitcoin is 38,741. And tonight, guys, I am doing the presentation, so I'll just jump into it. So, guys, this presentation is titled How to Succeed in the 2020s. And with the subtitle of Four Young Kings, the 21st Century Blueprint. And this is, of course, for Bitcoin Kindergarten. So first, I'm going to have to say a little disclaimer because this, this presentation is aimed more at the males between the age of 18 and, say, 40. Basically, like my friends and the people I see around me. And though the information is universal... I feel from my experience, I can talk better to the young males out there who are still trying to get their shit together, still don't have a roadmap and, and are still basically flowing in the wind. So the ladies out there that may be listening, just take this information and flip it to the feminine and, you know, put, put yourself in, in your point of view and in your shoes and the information will still be the same. But to all my guys out there, I see you, I, I understand your plight, I understand what you guys are going through, and so I've been thinking about this presentation for a minute, just how do I get this information across, and how do I do it in, a, in an entertaining, fun, and inspiring way. So, with, without further ado, let's get into it. So, first things first, first thing you gotta do to understand how you're going to succeed in the next decade, in the 2020s, is ask yourself, what do you want out of life? It's a simple question, but a lot of people can't even answer that. So just get in your mind. What do you want out of life? And and then we'll start making moves towards that. So I got this, this idea from Twitter one day. It was this idea of ABZ thinking. And the concept is basically um, to to move forward in life, you have to know where you're going and what your next steps are. So in this ABZ thinking concept, think of where you are currently, all your flaws and, and all your pros and everything you're good at and everything you're bad at, that's where you are at point A. And then think of where you wanna go, the, the end goal, the final best version of you, and that will be Z. And then point B on the line to get to point Z will be what is the next step that you can take today or tomorrow or this week to get towards point Z. And if you just continue that process of assess where you're at at point A, make your next step to point B, you'll you'll end up at point Z. So you got to know where you're at and where you're going and at the same time know where you're heading. So it's a simple, simple process of assess where you're at, assess where you want to go, and then make the next logical step to get there. And like I say right here in the slide, like this is the way. Once you can figure out where you want to go and you're brutally honest with yourself at where you're at, you can take your next step to go to where you want to go, to the end goal. So I have here on the top top left, only God can judge me. And I know a lot of people aren't religious, but I, I take this more in, in the sense of Tupac. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Tupac and I and I love his music and, and I love his ride or die mentality and that idea of only God can judge me in the sense that it doesn't matter what anyone says about you or what you're doing about what what you're doing in life. It's just what do you think about it? So whatever it is you want, go after it. So I have right here in pictures on the left, whether you want to have the damn Blizzarian harem lifestyle, the Playboy lifestyle it's up to you. Or on the right, I have a picture of Jay-Z with laser eyes. Whether you want to be a, a, a mogul, a businessman, you know, create empires, be, be a billionaire, whatever it is, whatever your moonshot goal is, just have that in mind. So it doesn't really matter. It's just what do you want in a life 
and go after it. So only God can judge me. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Figure out where you want to go and start heading towards it. And be realistic, you know, like you may not end up where you want to go, but as long as you have a realistic goal and, and you're persistent, then you can you can have that lifestyle. You can be the playboy or you can be the mogul. But also, maybe you're just a simple man with simple pleasures. Maybe you just want the American dream with the white picket fence. You want a family. You want a beautiful wife and kids and, you know, just work work a normal job and and do that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, don't let society shame you into making you believe that you have to be something that you're not. Just be consistent and be honest with yourself in what you want to do whether you want to be the playboy or the the conservative american it doesn't matter to me it just it matters to you what do you want out of life and i'm i'm doing all this so that you can get in your head the idea of what you really want in life what do you actually want because if you don't have that idea then there's not going to be any passion behind your your actions and so you'll just let anything happen to you but if you are rigged with what you want out of life and you're consistent and persistent and determined to get that out of life then you won't take anything less so there's nothing wrong with you wanting just the american dream the white picket fence and the family just remember what is it that you want out of life and that's the determining factor of all this so get in your head exactly what you want out of life and make moves towards that assess where you are and make towards make moves towards your final goal so like i said there's a b z thinking so right now i said this is how to succeed in the 2020s so we got to assess where we are in in 2021 and furthermore like what happened in 2020 so i have here on the left the the a slide of the fed the st louis Federal Reserve um, site, the fred.stlouisfed.org, and it's showing the M1 money supply. And so anyone who hasn't been living under a rock will know that last year, in 2020, governments around the world created an obscene amount of money. They, they printed trillions of dollars, and we have yet to see that effect on on society. We're just coming out of lockdowns. We're in this new post-lockdown era. And so we have still yet to see how this is going to affect human behavior and or the economy. But I have some clips right here of what, what happened. And, you know, I have here's what's in Biden's 1.9 trillion economic rescue package. And then in Canada unveils largest economic relief package since World War II. Stimulus packages outlined by UK government in response to coronavirus. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Your government has probably printed an obscene amount of money. And if you don't know what that means yet, it means that inflation is due. It's going to come in the future. They, they can create money out of thin air which basically means that they're robbing whatever money you are saving currently. So inflation or, or money printer go burr is a hidden tax. They are taxing you with a co without your covert or overt knowledge. So it doesn't really matter where you are in the world, whether you're United States, Europe, Japan, China, India, literally everywhere. Your government has probably printed trillions, if not just obscene amount of billions of dollars. And currently, this is this is an American centric podcast. So our current president is about to print even more trillions amount of dollars. And guys, like if you don't understand how big of a number trillion is, go Google it. Pause this and go Google how big of a trillion is compared to a billion compared to a million. It's an obscene amount of money. And the fact that they can just print this at the whim of a button is just it's out of control and no one should have that control. But yet, this is where we are. This is our current condition in the world. And this is our, our current condition with the government and the politicians that we're at. They are going to continue to print money. And that's that's their magic button. The economy will almost die, but they'll print money. We saw that happen in 2008. And as we've seen in 2020, they will continue to use that tool. So, again, continued. Where are we in 2021? Another frightening aspect of where we are currently in the world is the fact that 
we are a very digital digital society. Everyone's on social media. We're all using digital banking. So one of the nefarious parts of that is that you can get banned from that. You can get cut off from your bank. You can get cut off from social media and contact with your loved ones. And so I have some clips here. You know, whether you like these people or not is irrelevant. It's just the fact that this may be you. And one one tenet of free speech is that whether I like what you do or what you say, you still have the right to say it. And that's that's what free speech is. I may not like what you're saying, but you have the right to say it. And so here we have a, a clip of President Trump permanently banned from Twitter. He was president at the time when he was banned. So if the president can get banned from Twitter, like what hope do you have? You as a as a normal person, as a pleb, and and I say that in, in loving, endearing terms, you have have no choice in the matter. If they want to cut you off because they don't like what you're saying you're pretty much a deleted person. And this other clip, Facebook's arbitrary, inconsistent censorship follies. So it's not just Twitter or, or Facebook. It's every social media platform out there is censoring wrong think. And there's, there's a very, very strong perspective or, or alignment of trying to control what people are thinking and if you say or do the wrong thing, then you can be deleted. And then furthermore, like I have this stuff about you getting cut off from, from your banking. So PayPal admits to censoring content based on social justice. So PayPal is a social media platform, even though we consider them just a banking platform. So if you're buying things that they don't like, they can shut off your, shut off your banks, shut off your money. And as we've seen in the last year, if they can control who you're paying, they can basically control your life. And furthermore, the controversial Laura Loomer, she got black blacklisted from payment processor Stripe, which is basically, you know, if you wanna if you wanna be an independent person and they cut you off from Stripe, well, you you're not making any money. You can't go to the grocery store, you can't buy food. If you can't eat, you can't survive, and your wrong thing is done. And then furthermore, even if it's just like a, a a uh, innocent app like TikTok, it's all fundamentally spying on you, and it and you are the product. So Reddit CEO claims TikTok app is fundamentally parasitic and spyware. So again, where are we in 2021? Well, first off, our money is broken. They're printing money obscenely, and secondly, our digital lives are being tagged and bagged. And if they don't like what you're saying, well, they can just cancel you. But what can we do to protect ourselves? Because we're living in strange times. Personally, I feel like this might be one of the strangest times that there's ever been as a human. We are in unprecedented, uncharted waters. And it is getting kind of scary. It's very, very frightening to see where society is headed. And if you aren't aware of this, then you may be blindsided. So what can we do to protect ourselves? And this is the whole the whole premise of this presentation is we're going into the 2020s. This decade is going to be an insane decade. We have yet to see the effects of social media on society at large. It's basically still an infant. And we are just starting to see the effects on people, whether it's, you know, only fans with women or toxic feminism or the black pilled MGTOW men or, you know, the the extremist um, incel Internet people or just, you know, Bitcoiners on, on one end or the opposite end, because there are factions on the Internet where you can either thrive or, or you can dive or, you know, so you got to pick what information you are ingesting because if i'm the first person to tell you this you need to wake up but mainstream media is lying to you and if you're watching this content then you're very much aware of that and so if you want to succeed you're going to have to be your own mental point of origin you're going to have to start thinking for yourself you're going to have to take some risks and break away from the traditional status quo and so here is the crux of this. What can you do to protect yourselves?
Well, this is a Bitcoin podcast. This is a Bitcoin focused show. So Bitcoin fixes this. Bitcoin will keep all this in check. First, let's get to the, the inflation problem. The fact that a, a politician can print money at a whim. Well, if you aren't aware, Bitcoin is hard cap at 21 million Bitcoins or 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis. So there will never be any more Bitcoin than 21 million. And that's a feature, not a bug. So as long as no one is in control of the money supply, as long as the Bitcoin money supply is algorithmically controlled, human greed will be checked. No one ever again will be able to inflate the money supply and steal from, from their citizens, from, from the, the people that they're supposed to rule. And to me, that's one of the biggest beauties of Bitcoin is no one can steal my wealth once I put it into Bitcoin. And so if I am going to try to build something in the 2020s in this next era, I need to build it on something hard, on something with a strong foundation. And so that foundation is a money that won't be inflated. And secondly, Bitcoin is censorship resistant. There is no middleman to Bitcoin. There, there is just peers on the network. And when I send someone Bitcoin, it goes straight to that person and no one is in between it. No one can stop that payment. If you've been around a little bit on Bitcoin Twitter, you will understand that Bitcoiners will send Bitcoin to sanctioned states and not blink twice about it. Well, you can't do that on traditional finance and in, a, in your banking apps. And that's one of the beauties. That, that's, that's another problem solved. They, they can't cancel me. You may be able to try to delete me off the internet, but my money is safe. My money is secure and it's censorship resistant. I can send my money where I want it, when I want it, and how I want it. So, and that leads to this idea of freedom money. Bitcoin is freedom money. In this 2020s, I feel, or not I just feel, it, it's seemingly looking like the world is going into two different camps. Like my buddy Nick Camp Mind said at Bitcoin Conference 2021, it's either communism or Bitcoin. And whether you've read history or not, you should know that communism is a failure. You do not want communism. It sounds all rosy and... and hippy dippy, but really you want personal freedom. You want to be able to send your money where you want, when you want, and have no tyrants in between that. So this idea of freedom money will help you prosper into this next decade. In this world where it looks like big tech is watching everything you do, they're, they're tagging and bagging all your internet um, activity. You need this freedom money so that you can interact with who you want, when you want, and how you want. So this idea of 21 million Bitcoins and freedom money is the crux of how you will succeed in the 2020s because no longer can people inflate your money. And secondly, it's your money. That's, that's revolutionary. So fix the money, fix the world. It's, it's as simple as that. You need to hodl Bitcoin because that is literally the only thing that you can save in today that won't ever be inflated. Yes, people will say stuff about real estate, that real estate is a great buy. Of course, land will always be needed. People will always need a house. Gold is a secondary thing that people consider a free market tool. Yes, I, you know, I, I, I can't knock you for wanting land or gold because it's physical, it's tangible. It's something that you can hold. But that's also a bug in, in the, or a chink in its armor. Because it is physical, it can be confiscated from you. It can be taken away from you. And Bitcoin being a fully digital money, being just ones and zeros, it's essentially speech. And you can memorize your seeds in your brain and you can go anywhere in the world with your money. So fix the money, fix the world. And this idea of fix the money, fix the world is aligned with the separation of money and state. Bitcoin is a globally free money. There's no one in control of it. It's just, it's home is the internet. It's the internet's native money and it's alive on the internet and no one can kill it. It's been running for 12 years so far and every government 
has had to try to attack it and they realize they're better to align with it than to fight it. But yet still some places are going to fight it. And that's just that's just the name of the game. So in the next 2020s, in this next decade, there will be a lot of FUD. There will be a lot of people telling you that you should own something else other than Bitcoin. And um, some people may just be naive and some people are being nefarious. They know what time it is and they don't want you to own it because if you own Bitcoin, then you are uncontrollable. And that's a good thing. Individual choice and freedom. That is a good thing. No longer do we have to sacrifice ourselves for the collective. Think like what you want. That's why I started this presentation with what do you want out of life? Because no one knows what's better for you than yourself. And in our world, our government thinks they know what's best for us. But I know what's best for me. I know what I want out of life. And I know what goals I want to or I want to create or build or even just enjoy so remember this you know what's best for yourself and don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise do not sacrifice yourself for another man and another another important part is that bitcoin will achieve privacy from big tech it's it's outside of their control and if they can't control your money they can't control you and so we just locked in Taproot and not to get into the weeds, but privacy is looking really good for us into the future going into this decade. And like I said earlier, Bitcoin is easily transportable. It's just words. It's you can you can memorize all your money. You can basically have billions of dollars in your brain and walk anywhere around the world and no one can know otherwise. Whereas try to do that with gold, try to do that with land, try to do that with cash. It's not possible. If if you walked around with that much money, people will know this. Bitcoin is a global network with no middleman. It's ones and zeros. It's free speech money. It's freedom money. It's uninflatable, hard cap freedom money. Bitcoin fixes this. Fix the money, fix the world. So how do you succeed? I started this presentation with that, and I will end with that. I will give you the exact blueprint, and it's going to sound real simple, guys. And this isn't the whole blueprint, but this is what the average person, the average male, the average young male, and like I said, the average young king, this is the information he needs. First, budget. Spend less than you make. This is timeless advice that no one ever wants to listen to because, you know, you want that fancy watch, you want that nice car, you, you lease out that that really cool whip, you know, you want that new TV, you need that Xbox, you need the jewelry, whatever it is that you like, that's flashy, that you over leverage for, you, you think you need it. And if you can pay for it, then by all means, pay for it by enjoy your life. But a lot of people need to budget, they need to spend less than they make. So don't spend money that you don't have. Going, going over leverage on your credit card isn't the best idea unless you have a plan of attack, unless you have a way to pay that back without putting yourself in deep water, then you shouldn't do it. And the second thing is build. Stop being someone's worker bee. Try to create something for yourself. Do a side hustle. Create, you know, start a hobby. Do something that you can build skills. And this will teach you patience, persistence, determination. You need to build. It doesn't matter what it is. Build something for yourself because you can never get rich being someone's worker. That's that's just a timeless, timeless cliche at this point. You can never get rich being someone's worker. You can never get rich trading your time for money. You need to create something. You need to build something that brings you money in while you sleep. You need to make money in your sleep and there's definitely different ways to do this and i'll leave that up to you but you need to get this idea of your in your head that you need to build you need to create something because there's no such thing as an overnight success fast money comes with slow problems everything takes time you need to build skills you need to build a business build your mind build your body as a man no one cares about you and that's that's just a feature and you need to create yourself you need to make yourself Women just are, and men must create themselves. That's just the name of the game. Don't go around having this victim mindset. Go build. Create something.
doesn't matter what it is. If you're an artist, create art. If you like business, create a business. If you like to help people, provide services for people. It doesn't really matter what it is. Just build, be useful, provide value for people, and they will exchange their money for your time. And like I, even though I'm contradicting myself a little bit, it's a fundamental feature of life that you must create value in exchange for other people's value. So you can arbitrage that by, you know, your skills or you can create a business that pays you overnight. It really doesn't matter. You just need to build and create something that is your own so that you can prosper into the future. And this is the part where we get into Bitcoin. The simplest and the best way to create success and create wealth, create generational wealth, is to dollar cost average into Bitcoin. I, I'm going to guess that you're just an average person with average means. And so now that I've taught you to budget, you need to save in hard money. Like I told you earlier, Bitcoin is hard capped at 21 million. So if you can just take your paycheck, take, say, at least 10% of your paycheck, if not more, if you have more conviction and put it aside into Bitcoin and don't touch it for years to come, make sure that you keep doing that consistently every week, every two weeks, every month, whatever, whatever it is that your money's coming in, then you build this nest egg and that will be your retirement. Don't touch it. Once it gets into Bitcoin, do not touch it. There's this great book. It's one of my favorite books. It's The Richest Man in Babylon. And the idea from there that, that I took and it, it's, it's helped me tremendously is if you get profit, split it up in tenths and take one tenth, put it away, put it in long term savings and don't ever touch that. And that will be your nest egg for when you're an old man. And then you try to live your life, live within the means of that nine tenth of your paycheck. And if you can budget and discipline your life in such a way, then you are already building the keys to a successful future. And furthermore, now that we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the greatest savings technology, the greatest money we've ever had. So it's that much easier. The Richest Man in Babylon was written over 100 years ago, and now we have a technology that can amplify that. It's a beautiful thing. So, like I said, take a certain percentage of your income, put it aside into Bitcoin, and don't touch it. Historically, if you hold your Bitcoin for more than four years, you're in the green. So any money you put into Bitcoin, don't touch it. Make sure that your time horizon is at least five years, 10 years better, 20 years to be best, maybe 30 years. If you're young, you know, hold it the longer and you'll be passing down money to your children's children and it'll be a beautiful thing. And you'll come back or you'll tell your kid and be like, this happened because of that one YouTube video that changed my life on Bitcoin Kindergarten. And that'd be a beautiful thing. So lower your time preference. You may be unfamiliar with the idea of time preference, but basically play long-term games with long-term people. When the time comes, deploy your capital to build, create, invest. It doesn't really matter what you do. You just need to have this fundamental foundation of saving your money. Don't overspend your money and your money being Bitcoin. And if you can just lock that in your head, that Bitcoin is the best money there is, and I'm going to save in it, I'm going to claim my digital real estate today and continuously into the future, then this next decade is going to be on easy mode. You're still going to have to create stuff. You're still going to have to build. You're still going to have to work. But as long as you're saving in Bitcoin, there's a certain peace of mind that comes from that and no one can tell you what to do. There's there's um, the meme of Bitcoin is fuck you money. And it truly is. Once you start saving in Bitcoin, once you have a nice little nest egg, it, it, it changes you. Bitcoin changes you. You don't change Bitcoin. It changes you. And so going to this next decade, that is the master plan. You have to know where we're at and where we're at is scary. It's, it's strange times right now. But we have the tools to fix that. We have the tools to succeed. And it's saving in Bitcoin. And there's going to be more tools on top of that. But for now, what you need to do is save your wealth in Bitcoin. And it's really that simple. Like, don't overcomplicate things. This advice sounds simplistic. It sounds too good to be too, too good to be true. But good advice doesn't need to be complicated. It's really simple advice, 
But the follow through is the hard part. You need to discipline yourself. You need to sacrifice. You need to put away some things and, and come back to it and weigh the the opportunity cost of, of going out and doing that trip or, you know, buying that clothes with, should I save a little bit? And a lot of people don't want to hear that. People want their kicks now. They, they want that instant gratification. We live in the instant gratification time of social media. So lowering your time preference is hard to do. But it is also, in that same sense, a revolutionary way of living. You need to simplify your life, and you need to avoid the distractions. And one of that distractions, or many of those distractions, are investing in in altcoins, investing in complicated trading setups. What you really need to do is save in hard money. You need to save in good money. And life will be that much easier. If you follow the way, the way will bless you. It's blessed a lot of people. It's blessed a lot of my friends. And it sounds too good to be true. But I'm telling you, you just need to save in Bitcoin consistently. It's as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate things. Provide the value and you will get the Bitcoins. Whatever value you can provide as a man, you need to do that. But you need to save some in Bitcoin. You need to save in the hardest money there is. So I have here, stack sats and stay humble. It doesn't really matter where you are in life right now. You you can be the lowest version of yourself, but you can build yourself and climb yourself out of the gutter. And so by doing that, you're going to need to save some money, save in Bitcoin. You're going to have to read and learn things. You're going to have to build your body up. If you're fat and unhealthy, you won't be able to see Bitcoin succeed. So there's a lot of work that a man needs to put in to become the best version of yourself. And that's just the way it is. Don't let people dupe you and tell you, oh, you're perfect as you are. You're not. You may be the best version of yourself, but you can still be better. You're a man. There's always something that you can improve on. And so life as a man is constant improvement. But play long-term games. Don't don't go for this the shortcut. Don't don't seek the the easy way in life. If you do the hard things now, life will be easier later. And that's just how it is, guys. I don't make up the rules. I just report them to you. So build the foundation and the rest will follow. Save in good money. Build your mind up. Build your body up. Create businesses. Create art. Read books. Eat well. All these things are baby steps for you to be the best person and for you to succeed in the 2020s. And I know this sounds very cliche, but timeless truths are timeless truths for a reason. We've been saying the same thing over and over and over for hundreds, if not thousands of years, but people still don't listen. The only difference now is we have Bitcoin. We have this tool that no one can mess with, that no one can tamper with, that no one can inflate, that no one can steal your hard-earned time and energy and all you have to do is buy some all you have to do is be consistent in your stacking and life will reward you bitcoin is the way and you need to save in it it's as simple as that and so we're getting towards the end but here's some suggested reading if what i'm saying sounds a little over your head if you're new to bitcoin if you're new to this thinking then I have some economic books and, and some, I guess, like nonfiction books that you should read. So first off, The Bitcoin Standard by Safety and Amos. It's a great book about the history of money and how this relates to Bitcoin. Definitely recommended reading. The next one is The Sovereign Individual. This book was written in 1997, and it's basically prophetic. It, it, it essentially outlined where we are today, and it was written over 20 years ago. It's an amazing book. It's a little, it's a little tough for, for the average reader. It, it's a little dry in the facts, but it's, it's almost written like a sci-fi book. And now looking back on it, it's just amazing how close they got to uh, their vision in the book and also how frightening. So this is one of those books that you need to read because it's basically telling you the, the game plan for where we're going. And like I said earlier, The Richest Man in Babylon, it's a great book. It's written like fiction, and it tells you timeless truths that 
people have been using for f- basically forever on how to create and maintain wealth. So go get yourself the richest man in Babylon. The next is the Nakamoto Institute. This isn't a book. It's a website created by Pierre Rochard and um, Michael Goldstein or Bitstein on Twitter. And it's essentially everything you might need to know about Bitcoin with with this Austrian perspective, with this toxic Bitcoin maximalist perspective of it's the tool to survive what's happening in the future right now. And this next book, Economics in One Lesson, it's one of my favorites. It's a simple read. You can literally read the first chapter and you get the whole book, but definitely read this book because a lot of people need economics. And economics isn't this dead study like most people think. Economics is a living, breathing study. And so it'll help you in life. If you are good at economics, real economics, you will be able to succeed in life. So get 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 on this economics train, read a little bit, improve your life, and everything will follow. And the last book is Human Action. If you really want the the Bible of economics, of Austrian economics, read Human Action and you will get a deep dive on human action, on, on why people act the way they do in society and the theory behind it and all that good stuff because you need that to understand what's going on in life. If you're just an average person, you have basically been lost in the sauce. You've been taught wrong and you need to unteach yourself all this stuff. That's one of the things about growing up especially today, you need to unteach yourself a lot of things because you've been molded to essentially be a broken person, someone that needs the government to survive. And I want to say, fuck that. I see you as an individual. I see myself as an individual and I have the freedom to choose what I want out of life. And that's why I'm here. I want you to have that same freedom, that same mentality of, I know what's best for me and I will create the best life for myself And if I'm wrong, so be it. At least I tried. So thanks for listening, guys. I hope this has inspired you. If you want to get in contact with me, for one, you can come hang out with me on Bitcoin Kindergarten or just hit me up on Twitter. It's at my living truth, my M-Y underscore L-I-V-I-N underscore truth. So again, thanks for listening. I hope that this will help you improve your life. And just one last one last word, guys. Just stack that, stay humble, go live life. Make sure you're saving in Bitcoin. Make sure you're aware of what's happening around you because they don't want you to know. But now that you know, what are you going to do? You're going to succeed anyways, like DJ Khaled. They don't want to see you succeed, so we're going to succeed anyways. All right, we're out you. Until next time, guys.